What's up, y'all? This is Josh coming at you from Keep It Techie, where we break down Linux and tech to help folks level up and get into the field. Now, today we're diving into the latest release of Parrot OS version 6.4. And trust me, this one is packed with updates for ethical hackers, red teamers, and anyone serious about cybersecurity. If you're into pen testing, digital forensics, or just want a secure system for privacy focused day to day use, then stick around because Parrot OS 6.4 drop some serious tools including one that lets you weaponize microsoft teams yeah you heard me right let's get into it all right so let's start with a quick breakdown of what parrot os 6.4 brings to the table and right now i'm at parrotsec.org and if you want to check out information about the latest release there is an article right down here underneath the download button if you click there that'll take you to the release notes and this was put up uh, about a week ago on July 7th, 2025, which is around the release date, but it is now available. So anyone can download that latest release. And you can also upgrade to that latest release if you already have it installed on one of your systems. Now, I'll kind of cover it at a high level. This release is built on top of Debian, now ships with the Linux 6.12. LTS kernel. And this is great news for hardware support, performance, and stability. So whether you're running on bare metal, in a VM, or even on a Raspberry Pi, this kernel bumps everything up a notch. Now, if we scroll down a little further, the real story is in the tools. First up is Convo C2 a brand new tool aimed squarely at red teamers. It's designed to exploit Microsoft Teams for remote command execution. Basically, if your engagement involves Microsoft environments, this tool just opened a whole new vector to test. Then there's Gosh, a simple Go-based HTTP server. Think of it like a modern Python 3-mhttp.server but written in Go. So that means it's faster, portable, and useful in post exploitation or quick file transfer. Now, on top of that, we got a whole stack of updated tools like Metasploit 6.4.71, Beef-X is now at 0.5, Airgetting is at 11.50, Starkiller 3.00, NetEzec at 1.4.0, and PowerShell Empire is now at version 6.1.2. And another thing I thought was super cool, they even added official support for PowerShell 7.5 and bundled in .NET runtimes all the way from version 5 to 9, which is crazy helpful for cross-platform scripting and testing. And of course, Firefox ESR 140 comes pre-installed, important for privacy and this isn't just the latest browser it's been patched and locked down for folks who care about security by design there are also improvements to the parrot menu system also desktop shortcuts and tool references that make navigating the os smoother than ever so whether you're on the security edition the home edition or the hack the box edition everything is there for you now let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine so we can get this thing started what's up y'all if you've been watching my channel for a minute you already know i stay talking about linux and if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. Keep it techie. Peace. Okay, so I'm booted into my virtual machine and this is the security edition. I went on and downloaded that version and we can run through the quick install right fast. It's just like installing Debian. I'll go down and open up the installer and it shouldn't take too long to install. And let's run through it. And the first thing you wanna do is select your language, hit next, location. We can leave it there, New York, that's fine. Default, let's erase the disk and we don't need any swap. We can roll with that. You can encrypt the system if you need to, if you want to install it. You can actually run the system like it is right here live, but we're gonna install it just to install it for you guys. 
and then we're going to name it parrot which is fine and let's give it a super strong password hit next and here's a summary of everything we selected let's hit install boom install now so that'll go through the install and i'll come back when it's back up and run all right so the install is complete let me go down and reboot and we'll come back up with it all right so we logged into our updated system and i just wanted to quickly show you guys what you need to do as soon as you install the operating system i just mainly want to show you guys how to get things set up so the pseudo apps update this is one of the first things you want to do is update your system so pseudo apps upgrades and this will run the upgrades on your system so any updates within the last week or so that have been pushed to this distro will you know be updated here and actually i believe during the install it'll update so we're good to go so there are no updates for this release so that's good that's good to see also let's check the kernel so you name dash or see what version we got so 6.12.32 like we said then also firefox let's check the version of that just to verify that we got the version that they specified in the documentation okay so the first time you open it up you'll see form history control added to firefox foxy proxy standard added to firefox you block origin added to firefox so that's super cool to see all that's added right off let's go under help and let's go to about firefox so we see what version we got and we got 140 like it's specified in the documentation so good to go and to finish setup we just have to basically restart and that's what it'll do it's completing these steps to get most out of your browsing experience so yeah that's cool it's a setting everything up for you i'll minimize that but i also wanted to show you guys your normal setup let's see this is mate it's 1.26 I like Mate. Mate is super cool. If you guys didn't know what Mate is, Mate actually came from GNOME 2. GNOME 2 was the desktop environment that a lot of people like that Ubuntu was using before they came out with that latest version of GNOME that they got over there. GNOME 2 was the one that people really liked. And so it branched off once they switched to GNOME 3 and they created Mate out of that. And so people been constantly developing Mate, just keeping it alive. It requires X11 and all that good stuff. And I know Parrot has, has been keeping it alive as well. They've been using that on their operating system for a while. It's not going anywhere. You can check out all your applications under here, like all your services, all your security tools, you know, all that stuff is under here. Just wanted to quickly kind of go through it. I'm not gonna go through each one of them. You guys can check out the documentation, but everything is there for you when you install the security version of it. And then you also got your privacy settings, proxy chains, all that good stuff is in here. Encryption, secure file deleter. So check out all the tools that are in here. Play around with it. It's an awesome release. All right, let's talk about it. I've been following Parrot OS for a long time. And this release tells me one thing. The devs are serious about staying competitive with Kali, Black Orch, and the rest of those distros out there that fall in this category. That Convo C2 tool, that's next level. Anytime you're pushing the boundary of offensive security, especially targeting modern enterprise apps like Microsoft Teams, that tells me this distro is staying relevant. The updates to tools like Metasploit and NetExec plus the PowerShell and .NET support makes it clear this distro is built with cross-platform operations in mind. You're not just targeting Linux boxes anymore. You're playing in Windows land, cloud environments, hybrid networks. Also, shout out to them for including Raspberry Pi support with the same LTS kernel. That's big for folks running mobile labs or doing hardware pen tests. I personally think more distros need to start treating ARM and RISC-V as first-class citizens. And it sounds like Parrot OS 7.0 is about to make that jump. That's the other thing. This might be the last release in the 6X series. The devs are already teasing Parrot 7 which is gonna be based on Debian 13, Trixie. They're talking about new desktop environments, more ARM support, and overall modernization. To me, Parrot OS feels like a distro made by hackers for hackers, but without making it so raw that a beginner can't get started. If you've ever felt overwhelmed jumping into Kali, this might be a lane you could try out. Now, of course, no distro is perfect. I love to see better, App Warmer or SE Linux integration, maybe even more automation tools like Ansible playbooks or pre-configured VMs for lab environments. But honestly, for a free and community-driven project, 
ParadoS is delivering the goods. So there you have it. ParadoS 6.4 is live and loaded. If you've been thinking about diving into ethical hacking or just want a secure distro with everything you need out of the box, now's the time to give it a shot. Whether you're spinning it up in a VM, running it on a Raspberry Pi, or dual booting it on your daily driver, this release is solid. And with Parrot 7 on the horizon, this is a great point to jump in and get familiar with the ecosystem. Now, if you learn something new, make sure to smash that like button, share it with someone trying to break into tech, and of course, subscribe to the Keep It Techie channel so you don't miss the next deep dive into another distro. And as always, stay learning, stay building, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's going to take effort. You'll have to grind. But think about this, the time is gonna pass anyway, so why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills, it opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career, it's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it, because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech. Wow. <laughs>